Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And today we're going to take a look at the new air-to-air -air waypoint system uh, for the FA-18C that was uh, pushed out in the latest open beta update uh, just before Christmas of 2018, uh, right before ED took their very well-deserved uh, Christmas break. And we're gonna take a look at that air-to-air -air waypoint system and how you can use it to increase uh, your situational awareness and thus increase your lethality against air targets uh, as well as help you avoid any targets that you may want to uh, avoid on your exfil from a target area when you're low on gas weapons and probably ideas which uh, we don't want to be low on any of those things of course so we're just orbiting crystal springs at the moment uh, awaiting clearance to push through uh, coyote alpha and out to range 74 Charlie, where we've got uh, two QF4s and a QF16 in some lazy orbits for us to demonstrate how to hunt down targets uh, in conjunction with AWACS, Wingman, uh, your TDC uh, pointer, as well as um, the, of course, the new air-to-air -air waypoint system. And you can see we're in the gorgeous uh, Centennial of Aviation skin for VX31, the testing squadron out at China Lake, which of course we can see on uh, the tail there. A uh, very cool glossy uh, gold gray and orange and white scheme that would look right at home on an A4 Skyhawk or an F4B or J Phantom uh, in the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and uh, hop on into the office and we shall get started. Alrighty, so first thing we're going to want to do is actually set our air-to-air -air waypoint. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the F-10 map. Uh, we've got our uh, autopilot on, so our nice lazy orbit here will definitely be held. Uh, so I can show you guys the situation and uh, show you guys what you need to do in terms of uh, mission editing if you make missions for uh, multiplayer or you simply just make little practice runs for yourself, what you need to do in order to make this work correctly. So we'll go ahead and click on our flight so we can see our flight path. We got waypoint here, right on Crystal Springs where we're orbiting around. Looks like I got ourselves into a really nice orbit right around waypoint one. So uh, good on me for that, I guess. So uh, we'll go ahead and take a look. Waypoint two is right on top of a little uh, Red, Red Forces truck park. And our we can see that our blue bullseye is actually co-located right on top of waypoint two. So we need to have our bullseye located on one of our waypoints in order to turn that air-to-air -air waypoint, sorry, in order to turn that navigation waypoint into an air-to-air -air waypoint that makes sense in terms of the bra calls called out by, by our AWACS, which is orbiting up and down just east of the box here through Coyote Charlie and Coyote Alpha, as well as range 64 Alpha. And I guess he's in range 64 Bravo as well. So we'll go ahead and hop back into our office and we'll get started with that. And we can see here, we go down to our support page, we'll go to our HSI. You can of course do this on our M on your MPCD, I just I like manipulating the waypoints better on my TDIs. So we can go ahead and go into data. We'll push up to waypoint two, as waypoint two is the waypoint co-located with our bullseye so that we can get the correct bra calls from uh, AWACS without confusing ourselves. And we're gonna want to go ahead and select uh, push button, uh, uh, the bottom, second to bottom push button on the left hand side of the DDI to box air to air waypoint. The little two there is of course to notify us that uh, our air to air waypoint is waypoint two. So we can go ahead and go on back to our EW. You can see our E3 out there uh, hanging out. And we can see now on our radar format page that uh, we do have some different uh, information here. So we'll go ahead and put our sensor select switch right, denoted by that diamond, so that we uh, slave our TDC to our radar cursor. And as we move that radar cursor, we can see that both of those numbers, the bra at the bottom, as well as the air to air waypoint at, at the top, uh, change. So this number down here shows the bearing and range to our radar cursor, but note it does not display the altitude. 
This is very important for AWACS calls later on, as well as we can note that uh, our air-to-air waypoint up here is the bearing and range to our air-to-air waypoint, which is waypoint two, as well as co-like located with our bullseye, which what every flight is going to recognize as the bullseye, including our AWACS with their calls. So we'll go ahead and get our radar set up. We'll go ahead and push it out to 80 miles, we'll leave it at, at a 140 degree azimuth sweep, and we'll push it up to, how about a four bar scan? That'll work well for us. Looks like we've got some inlet ice going. So we'll go ahead and turn some anti-freezing on. All right, and why don't we go ahead and shed a little light on the subject. And come on back down. Okay, so we know that we're not going to violate the box on our way through uh, Coyote Alpha based on our current position. So I think we are good to go ahead and push towards waypoint two, which is in fact our air to air waypoint that we selected. So we'll go ahead and pull the autopilot off. And we'll go ahead and fly on towards our waypoint two. Wingman's with us, we're good. I'm just making a lazy left-hand turn here just to make sure that we uh, clear the box and don't uh, upset the Air Force. Alrighty. Now that we're pointed towards our waypoint, we can see some things have changed on our radar format page. So why don't we go ahead and throw her back into autopilot for us just so that we can uh, explain and talk a little bit better about things. We've got one radar contact right here. So he's pretty close to that truck park uh, and our bullseye, which would be our target area. Uh, and we can see on our radar format page that uh, that little indication there, as well as actually a new contact, um, is the air-to-air -air waypoint, the bullseye, and in this case, also our target area, that truck park. So we can know that uh, where those things are. So why don't we go ahead and call the AWACS and see if we can get a pic picture. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and pause it right there so that we can talk about uh, bra calls from Darkstar. As you saw in the uh, radio page, we have two options to ask for um, a kind of overall picture of what's out there from AWACS. We can ask for a pic picture or we can ask for a bogey dope. Now these two things give us very different uh, uh, amounts of information. A picture is telling you where potential enemy flights are, whether they're uh, bogeys or they're bandits, uh, in relation to your bullseye, which in this case is the air-to-air -air waypoint we've set, as well as our target waypoint. This is very important, so see if you're pushing into a target deep in the heart of Iran on the Persian Gulf map, and you need to know where are the interceptors in relation to that target. Well, picture is gonna be what you want. Now, if you want to know where those interceptors are in relation to you, you ask for a bogey dope. And so that's why they're gonna give you two very different uh, indications of where those aircraft are and why it's very important to make sure you don't mix those up because you will totally confuse yourself and throw your essay out the window like that. So we'll go ahead and take a look up here. Bra, of course, is not undergarments. That in fact stands for bearing, range, and altitude. And of course, we can see this up here. Um, we've got, we asked for a picture. We got three groups on that picture, uh, which corresponds to our three aircraft. We've got a QF-16, QF-4, and another QF-4, I believe. So uh, we can see these three groups here. First group is bulls, which means it, it's giving you the location in relation to bullseye and not our own aircraft. 
166415. Now 166 is the bearing and 15 is the range. So uh, at, as well as an altitude at 9,000 feet. Second grip, which I believe is, the, is another QF4, is bulls for 23845. So bearing of 238 from uh, the bullseye, uh, four, five miles. Uh, of course, in this case, nautical miles, because we are dealing with aviation topics at an altitude of 20,000 feet. Uh, additional group at 293, 422 at an altitude of 15,000. So I believe that the two closer uh, contacts here are the ones that we were actually seeing on our radar format page down here. So that's good to know. Now we're going to unpause it and show you why this is important based upon um, what we can see with our air to air waypoint set. So we'll go for the uh, one for 166 for 15. So we can move our radar cursor and we can get an idea of the bearing and range from the bullseye right here. So that would in fact be this contact. So we'll go ahead and go and prosecute this target first. We'll go ahead and lock up that area. We'll turn on our HMD. And we can in fact see our radar contact out there. So why don't we go ahead and work from left to right in terms of the targets we prosecute. So we'll go ahead and pull her out of autopilot. Pull her out of auto throttle. And we can see that radar contact out there. The amount of SA you can get is pretty amazing. That is for sure. Uh, with both the air to air waypoint as well as your HMD turned on. And we'll go ahead and throw her on into air to air mode. We've got our AIM-120 selected. So this is our lower contact. And why don't we go ahead and ask for another picture. It's getting a little cluttered up there. So why don't we go ahead and go into reject one. And we can see based on our picture call from uh, Darkstar that the bandit we are tracking, tracking here is in fact the first group that he stated because it was uh, 130 for 15, uh, or actually 16 miles. And we can see that this is close enough. Oh, and we went ahead and lost him in the ground clutter. But as you can see, the situational awareness that we've gained from Darkstar has helped us find and track this target. We'll go ahead and close the range a little bit more. Alrighty, so here's a new indication from Darkstar, which is of course our AWACS, that we can talk about. Pop-up group. Now a pop-up group is a group that maybe fell off of his radar or was never on his radar to begin with and then pops back up on his screen. And so he's got to tell us uh, pretty immediately where that group is, which is very important because we don't want you know a new group that's come up or an old group that has fallen off and is now back again to go um, untold to the tactical fighter pilots in the area. Because uh, it is, of course, the AWACS's job to increase the SA of those pilots uh, in any way possible. Uh, so pop-up group, you always want to make sure you're listening for pop-up groups. Um, because if you miss those, you, you will have your essay degraded pretty quickly. Um, 267 for 11, let's see, 267 for 11. So it does not look like that this is the group that we're tracking. So that's another group that fell off of the AWACS's picture and popped back up. Uh, that is fine. Uh, and we'll go ahead and prosecute that target later. We'll go ahead and make sure we take care of this one first.
And we can see at the end of this target, we have an indication called cold. Uh, there are three indications you can have. There is hot, flanking, and cold. Three different indications, and they mean three very different things that are all equally important to know. Cold means that that aircraft is moving away from you, um, whether that's, they're moving parallel with you and away from you, or at an obtuse angle, moving away from you. So to illustrate, we'll go ahead and take a look here. So if a bandit is cold, or a group is cold, or even a bogey, a unidentified group, is cold, that means that that aircraft is going to be traveling away from you. Something like this. Why don't we use the ruler here? That bandit's going to be traveling away from you. Similarly, it can also be traveling at like an obtuse angle away from you. The second indication you can get is flanking. So that would be if the bandit or the bogey or the group is flying perpendicular to your flight path, that would be flanking because they're flying away from you but at, to either side. Now, flanking can also be called if the bogey, bandit is flying uh, an acute uh, line towards you, but off to the side. So that would be flanking. And then the third call, very important one, probably the most important one, is hot. That means that that, that enemy is coming straight at you, whether it's from head on or from the side after they were flanking and coming directly at you. If you have a hot call, that is really, really important because you always want to make sure you're on your toes and know where those uh, groups are that are coming at you hot, of course, because they have the intent to kill you. So we'll go ahead and come on up after this uh, QF4. So very important here, 303 for 17, 110 for 3, uh, and he's at 20,000. Obviously we're not at 20,000 feet, so definitely not the guy we're tracking. So we just want to make sure we're plotting uh, these groups that we're hearing mentally. That's another group, of course, because they're at 15,000. We're down here at about 9,000. I believe this guy is cold because it's, we're definitely having to run him down. So why don't we go ahead and give him a Fox 3 and maybe we can see if we can slow him down a little bit. Yep, so that got him to evade, so it's definitely going to help us track him down. Oh, looks like he's gonna pop behind the mountains. Good job for him, that is for sure. Oh, did he crash? Looks like we got a maneuver kill there. Perfect. So there's a new term, a maneuver kill. That is a kill that is had through simply maneuvering, whether you fired a missile at him or you're in a dogfight maneuvering against him for an advantage or you're in defensive against him and he hits the ground and he kills himself, that is a maneuver kill. That still counts as a kill for us. So 354 for 21. That would not be this guy that we're looking at here. So since we got one kill, why don't we go ahead and move on over to using the bogey dope. Okay. Bra, 214 for 8, altitude 9000, cold. So uh, this is what we call a bogey dope, of course, and this is where that group or bandit is in relation to our own aircraft. And so to find that information, we have to go down to our bra, uh, which is, is down here at, at the lower level. You can tell we'll two a different because the uh, target waypoint bullseye air to air waypoint symbol is up here next to this uh, bra, uh, but our regular bra is down here. This is in relation to our own aircraft. Now, just from mentally and visually plotting our the groups in the area, we know that this group is, of course, this bandit right here. 
But our TDC makes it very easy to verify that. So 21448 at altitude 9000. 214. That's pretty close to 21448. So we'll go ahead and lock him up. There he is. Perfect. And since he's cold, we'll go ahead and fire another Fox 3. See if we can get him to evade and that'll allow us to close the gap a little bit more. There goes our missile. I'm doubting that this one's gonna hit, but we will see. You can see him visually now, and there's a splash. There he goes, and kaboom. So we've got two of our bandits splashed. Now we just gotta go after our third bandit, which I believe is the QF-16. So we've got waypoint two selected, our area -air waypoint down on our HSI. So we'll go ahead and fly on back towards our target area, which is that truck park that's out there. And then why don't we go ahead and get another bogey dope from Darkstar. Radar back out. Two nine zero four nineteen flanking. That is not two nine zero. But the altitude does look right. There's our target out here. So you can see there that uh, our bra call for our bogey dope from uh, Darkstar was not perfect. Um, he, the bearing was off. However, the range was perfect. We saw that range there. We saw something close to it. So we went ahead and locked him up. IFF confirms that it is a bandit via the uh, diamond here instead of a square. But uh, things are not gonna be perfect. If we look at the map, uh, our AWACS is moving at this direction. We're moving parallel to him uh, coming north, uh, and he's moving around and, and turning, as well as the uh, radio, radar operator has to you know, visually see that blip on his screen. He has to mentally interpret what that blip means. Then he has to vocalize that blip to us. The radio waves have to travel. We have to get it. We have to listen to it. And then in our own minds, we have to then interpret what he's saying, look at our radar screen and, and interpret that way, find the target, lock it up, all that kind of stuff. And that takes time. It takes quite a bit of time, actually. Uh, much more time than you would think, even though it is, you know, in, in other relative terms, rather quick. And But in air-to-air -air combat terms, that is a long time. And things happen very, very fast in air-to-air -air combat, of course, because the jets are moving fast, weapons moving fast, your life is on the line, the jet is on the line, all these kinds of things. So... Uh, Close in, your, your bra calls are going to be close enough that you kind of mentally extrapolate and decide that, hey, that target is probably the target I'm looking for. Uh, things are not going to be perfect. Things are going to be confused. You know, of course, there's the fog of war, all of this kind of stuff that, that kind of plays into it. So we'll go ahead and go on after this. I believe this is a QF-16. And uh, as we can see on the F-10 map, I actually made a mistake that what we don't think we got a maneuver kill on that F4. He escaped and that explosion I saw on that mountain was actually our AMRAM exploding on the mountainside. So just another little fog of war thing that uh, it just happens. Same thing as like the bra calls are not always gonna be 100% precise all the time, but we have to keep on our toes, keep our SA going, mentally plot things, extrapolate things to know what is going to happen and plot what might happen in the future. So like you, like you said, he's up there, way up there at, at uh, 20,000. So let's go ahead and verify that with another bogey dope. And why don't we go ahead and Fox 3 on this bandit. 
Now see, Dark Star said he's clean. So he may be turning, and so things may be uh, unable to see it on his screen for a second there. And looks like he went ahead and splashed that QF-16. Alrighty. So we've got one AMRAM left. Okay, do be aware that uh, even though our last call to Darkstar was for Bogey Dope, he is giving us updates. And these updates are not Bogey Dopes, these updates are um, pictures. So they, these updates are in relation to where that aircraft, or that group, or that bandit, whatever you want to say, is in relation to the bullseye or air-to-air -air waypoint. So don't get confused in that, uh, in that setting, as uh, I know that that can definitely be confusing. Only think it's a uh, bogey dope if you've asked for a bogey dope. So 292 for 18. 292 for 18. Alrighty, so we're gonna have to come left towards the west. 292 for 18. 292 for 18. This is going to be close enough. Two, 292 for 25. That's going to be that's going to be close enough. So we're going to go ahead and lock him up. And I believe that is our last F4. So, like I said earlier, uh, he really nailed the uh, uh, bearing on that one. He nailed the altitude, but he didn't nail the range. He was roughly about uh, 10 mile separation between uh, the picture call that we got and the, um, the range to the actual target, which is fine. Uh, we can work with it, extrapolate it, find that target close enough, perfect, and lock him up and we'll go prosecute that target. Yeah, having the HUD into a reject mode really helps, because even even in reject, we have a lot of shit up on our HUD that uh, we have to see through. We didn't fly a very good intercept vector on this guy, so we are kind of uh, chasing him from the rear aspect. But we'll go ahead and Fox 3. And we'll see if we can slow him down. F4 E damage, perfect. We went ahead and splashed that last F4. And F4 splashed. Cool. So I hope this video gave you guys a little bit of an indication about uh, how to use the new air-to-air uh, -air waypoint system in conjunction with the AWACS uh, to help find targets a lot easier as well as uh, you know help you evade targets evenly, even if you needed to. Um, it really helps. Uh, I think it uh, definitely will help in terms of uh, multiplayer communication between players, giving each other bras for where the target is instead of being like, oh, hey, man, it's, it's kind of over in that uh, general area. <laughs> you know, that uh, tends to happen without having some sort of indication like that.
or as if you're giving a bogey dope, you no longer have to kind of chase it with the heading tape on the HUD or the heading tape on your HMD, uh, whatever it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, like I said, thanks for uh, sticking with the video, even though it's a bit off the cuff and unscripted. And uh, enjoy this beautiful simulator. That is for sure. There is nothing like DCS World. So I hope you have an awesome evening and you have an awesome time hunting down and splashing bandits with your air-to-air -air waypoints. Thanks a lot, guys. And we'll I see.